Hey, Carson, thanks for taking the time. We'll, uh, we'll get right to it. Let's start with John McMullen and then Jeff McLean. Hey, Carson. Um, Doug Peterson just uh, talked about simplifying the offense, uh, not just for you, but also for the young receivers, the constant moving parts on the offensive line. Um, what do you think that looks like? Obviously, you're the quarterback. What What is he trying to say by simplifying the offense? Yeah, I think it's, you know, to the – to the everyday fan, I think it, it'll look similar. I think some of it's just internally um, with, with schemes and, you know, maybe, you know, not bringing as much new stuff to the table or formations and shifts and motions. You know, I don't think it's been um, drastic one way or the other. I think, it, you know, sometimes that just allows us to play fast. And when you got, you know, moving pieces and a lot of young guys, um, sometimes that can help um, kind of spark um, us, you know, kind of turning this thing around. So I don't think it's going to be anything drastic that, that people will really notice, but Internally within the schemes and stuff, I think there'll be some subtleties that'll help us uh, play faster. Okay, Jeff McLean and then Jamie Apodi. Uh, Carson, uh, we just had Doug on earlier, and he was asked about uh, possibly making a quarterback change. And at first, he kind of hem and hawed over the answer, and then later he clarified that you were the starting quarterback. Is that something that he's uh, told you or, or needs to even tell you? Yeah, no, I mean, we haven't really had that conversation. And quite frankly, you know, I'm, I'm preparing – um, the same. I'm the same, and I'm approaching the week, attacking the week, and, and going to do everything I can to be ready uh, for Monday night. Okay, Jamie Apodio and Dave Zangaro. Carson, how do you deal with the massive amounts of pressure that, that comes from being the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles? I mean, the fact that you've got a bunch of bad games in a row, and suddenly the whole world is calling for you know, them to make a change at quarterback. And I, I know a lot of times you don't focus on that outside noise, but how hard is that to deal with as a human being? Yeah, um, honestly, you know, I'm blessed to have a, an amazing wife and a daughter at home that kind of keeps me grounded for starters, um, you know, and, um, you know, spend a lot of time every day in, in the Bible um, praying and, and just trying to stay grounded on uh, a much bigger picture um, than football, you know. And obviously this is this is a job, and uh, a lot of people in this city and in this in this country care a lot, and, and I am – uh, you know, approach it the same way. You know, I care um, sometimes too much, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, you, you want to succeed so badly. But uh, for me, it's just that constant reminder of a much bigger picture, a uh, much bigger purpose that God's got his hand um, all over this. He's already written the story. And for me, uh, I'm just trying to be obedient to, to where God has me and, and do everything I can um, to be the best player I can be, to be, be the best man I can be, the husband, father, all of those things uh, every single day. Dave Zangaro and then Rob Motti. Hey, Carson. Um, Doug was asked, or I asked Doug about Travis Fulgham, and he said, you know, he has to kind of readjust to the way defenses are playing him. Uh, where do you think Travis is right now? Do you think he can take that step to be an elite receiver? I do. I do. I, I have a lot of trust in Travis. Um, you know, I think – I don't think he needs to necessarily change how he plays. I think it's just continuing to build um, within this offense and, and kind of his route tree and all of those things. And I think, um, you know, he, he obviously came onto the scene pretty quick, caught a lot of people by surprise. And, um, you know, he's been a pleasant surprise for, for me and for this offense. Um, but he's going to keep being a big part of this offense. You know, last game, the conditions and everything were – uh, you know, maybe challenging for him, but, you know, that that is what it is. You know, I think he's uh, a dynamic player that's going to just keep getting better. He's still young, um, and within this offense, he's going to keep learning and um, developing into, uh, I, I believe, a, a really good player. Rob Motti and then Tim McManus. Hey, Carson, there's been a lot of turnover with the assistant coaching staff over the last four years. How has the identity of the offense changed? Obviously, you're a constant. Doug's been a constant. But there have been other people, other voices in there. How has that changed the identity of the offense? Yeah, I think every year, you know, a little bit is tweaked, so to speak. I wouldn't say identity has changed, but but tweaked. I mean, with, you know, personnel and, and just kind of how you're built um, as an offense with personnel and all of those things. But then, obviously, you bring in different – um, offensive minds and you know you kind of add some subtleties here and there and so I wouldn't say as a whole that the identities changed drastically but there's been subtleties really every year with uh, within the offense that I think um, we're going to keep kind of building off of this year you know obviously everyone knows there's a couple new um, coaches on the staff this year and I think as the you know as we've gone here um, we're really starting to hone in on some of these things and I think we're going to get this thing turned around on offense. Tim McManus and Zach Berman. 
Hey, Carson, just going back to, to Jeff's question, uh, you said that you're preparing the same way. I, are, are you, uh, do you have the understanding that you are going to be starting Monday night? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. And going back to the, uh, to the, the last time you played Seattle, um, obviously it's a playoff game that you weren't able to finish. And can you uh, help us uh, understand what the process was like sort of coming back from that, obviously the injury and then having to recalibrate uh, to, to climb up the mountain again uh, with the new season? Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, Tim, that's, that's a fair question, but you know, I don't like dwelling on injuries and quite frankly, head injury is not a, a fun thing to relive. Um, so I don't want to dwell on that too much. You know, I've just, I've had a lot of respect for, for this Seattle defense, you know, over the years. And I think, um, you know, they, they play fast. I think they're, they're different this year, different personnel and, um, different scheme a little bit. So, uh, as far as how we want to attack them, you know, that's, um, going to be a little different than, than over the years. But as far as your, your question about the injuries, you know, I don't really want to, you know, dive into that one. Hey, Zach Berman and then Bo Wolf. Hey, Carson, as, as Rob mentioned, this offense has evolved quite a bit over the past few years. What input do you have? Have you communicated to the staff what you want this offense to look like? And, and, and what does it need to look like for you to be at your best? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, coach and, and the staff really every year since I've been here has always um, been great in terms of, you know, asking for our input as as players, you know, not just me, but um players in general and some of the leaders uh, on offense. And, um, you know, I've, I've given my two cents here and there. You know, I, I also trust the coaches that they are going to put together the, the best plan possible. And, um, you know, I think they've done a good job. And, and you know, there's a lot of different uh, minds up there that, you know, we're trying to bring into one um, concise game plan. And I think we're, we're doing a good job of that. We just got to, as players, you know, come out and execute better and, and not, not hurt ourselves in some of these ball games. And so from your perspective, when is it best? What do you need to do to be at your best? Um, you know, I think – I don't think it's really the, the game plan, you know, when, when we've been struggling. Like I said, I think it's just – there's little things that, that hurt us, maybe early in games and, and, you know, turnovers or different things that we're really just shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, so I, I think I think the, the game plans have been solid this year, and I think um, how Coach calls it, I always, you know, have a lot of trust in him and, and everything. So – I don't want to, you know, dive into that as much as it's it's really just on us and on me um, to really, you know, drive this thing the right way and, and stop hurting ourselves. Okay, Bo Wolf and then Mike K. Carson, how did things go on Sunday in terms of, uh, you know, the game day operation without without press being there? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a little different without without press on the sideline and Coach Moorhead with the receivers and everything. But uh, I thought the, the other coaches and everybody handled it as smooth as we could. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, Nate Sudfeld kind of became that, that voice for me right next to me on the sideline. And, um, you know, I think, you know, given the circumstances and kind of the craziness of, of the year and, and everything, uh, I think we handled it as, as good as we could have. Mike Kay and then Martin Frank. Hey, Carson. Um, I was talking to Ron Jaworski a couple of weeks ago, and he said that this adversity will make you a better quarterback. How do you think adversity, this adversity will make you a better quarterback in the long run? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you go through adversity um, in life, you know, whether it's football, uh, relationships, any other job, whatever, you know, you're going to learn. You're going to learn and you're going to come out of it changed. And, it, and it's up, up to you as far as how are you going to be changed? Is it going to be for the better or for the worse? And, and for me, um, I've had adversity my whole life, you know, with, with football, with, from injuries, from, um, you know, just all sorts of things. And then, you know, every year there's some different form of adversity. And, and I'm always trying to learn and, and learn from each experience and become a better player, become a better man and handle these things. Um, to the best uh, of my ability, but uh, I'm not perfect at, at all, and, and I'm gonna, you know, keep looking introspectively, um, you know, in all of those things, and keep trying to identify where can I improve in all of those things, and I think that's what adversity really does. Um, but it's up to the person, you know, to that how how are you gonna handle the adversity? Is it gonna be um, to your detriment, or you know, something positive come out of it? Okay, Martin Frank, and then Chris and Rogers. Hey, Carson. Um, you, you were asked a little while ago about, about Travis Fulgham and stuff, but you also have like young, other young receivers, you know, like Hightower and Rager, you know, who are kind of going through up their ups and downs in, in their rookie season and stuff. How, how tough does that make it for you knowing that, you know, you have to rely on these guys, you know, even though, you know, you, you have the ups and downs of a rookie season for, for these wide receivers? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I've been saying it all year. You know, I've been I've been impressed with with these these young guys, and uh, I know I can do a better job of helping them out. You know, for starters, um, but. Uh, you know, I've been excited about them because, you know, they are extremely talented, explosive, you know, playmaking type receivers. And uh, it's just, you know, like I said earlier, it comes down to us just executing and, and you know, me doing everything I can um, to, to help those guys out. And, and I can do a better job of that. But I wouldn't say it's been a challenge in terms of that. I think it's it's just continuing to build this thing together and be on the same page and all of those things. And, um, you know, I've been saying it, but every week they keep getting better. They keep taking steps in the right direction. And um, they're going to help us, you know, in the in the short term and in the long term um, here in Philly. Time for one more, so we'll end it here with Kristen. Hey, Carson, going back to the question about adversity kind of for a second, you and this team have both dealt with your your own fair shares of adversity through the last few seasons. What's worked to overcome it? You know, that's a great question. I think for, for us, you know, first things first is not to panic um, in this building, you know, and not to in this locker room and guys to just, you know, press in a little bit more and, and – I think it's it really comes down to the, to the locker room um, coming together even tighter in, in these tough times and, and saying all right you know it doesn't matter what kind of hole we're in or whatever the situation you know we're going to dig ourselves out of it and you know fight like heck to get out of here and um, you know that's that's really been the, the resonating message the overall message over the years and I think it's the same thing you know that that was mentioned last week and it's going to be the same message this week like we cannot. Um, let anything else affect us outside of this locker room. Let's just do our jobs and keep executing, keep believing, um, and a little belief can go a long way. Okay, thanks, Carson. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.